This morning, I shall summarize the judgment of the appeals chamber on the appeal of the prosecutor against the decision of the pre-trial chamber two of 14th August, which inter alia granted the conditional release of Mr. Bemba. The appeals chamber, after careful deliberation, unanimously decides that the decision of pre-trial chamber two of 14th August, 2009, entitled Decision on the Interim Release of Jean-Pierre Bemba Gombo and Convening Hearings with the Kingdom of Belgium, the Republic of Portugal, the Republic of France, the Federal Republic of Germany, the Italian Republic, and the Republic of South Africa is reversed. In its analysis, under Article 58, 1B1 of the statute, the pre-trial chamber considered several factors that in its view reflected a substantial change of circumstances since the issuance of its previous ruling on Mr. Bemba's det detention. The appeals chamber in reviewing the pre-trial chamber's findings in this regard discerns clear errors of fact with respect to each factor. These errors are found to vitiate the impugned decision and in such circumstances, the decision must be reversed. The confirmation of charges against Mr. Bemba meant that there were now substantial grounds to believe that he committed the crimes charged, which increased the likelihood that he would abscond. In addition, the appeals chamber finds that the potential length of the sentence that Mr. Bemba is likely to serve, if convicted, is a further incentive for him to abscond. While the confirmation of charges is in itself a changed circumstance, in the view of the appeals chamber, the impact of this circumstance heightened the risk of Mr. Bemba absconding. The appeals chamber considers the financial status of Mr. Bemba to be a relevant factor in determining whether he would have the means to abscond or even to interfere with the investigations or the safety of the witnesses. In omitting to make a finding on Mr. Bemba's financial situation, the pre-trial chamber disregarded a relevant factor that it previously considered important, and thus the chamber erred. Similarly, other factors cited as changed circumstances were all found to have been misappreciated by the pre-trial chamber on account of a lack of explanation as to why these factors which were previously assessed in favor of continued detention, now constituted changed circumstances warranting Mr. Bemba's release. These factors included Mr. Bemba's political and professional position, international contacts and ties, his offer to surrender at some point prior to his arrest, his professed willingness to cooperate and appear voluntarily, and his unwillingness to set aside his, and I quote, years of sacrifice by becoming a fugitive. <coughs> In relation to the new factors cited by the pre-trial chamber as constituting changed circumstances, namely, Mr. Bemba's conduct whilst in detention and his conduct during his authorized attendance of his father's funeral. The appeals chamber finds that the pre-trial chamber erred in its assessment as it, dis it disregarded relevant factors in relation to such conduct. In relation to the second ground of the appeal, the appeals chamber determines that the pre-trial chamber erred in finding that Mr. Bemba should be released with conditions without also specifying the appropriate conditions or identifying a state willing to accept Mr. Bemba and enforce the conditions imposed.